two things happened as Greenpeace grew. First, it grew into more of a business than a campaigning organization, because now we had 2,000 employees, and we had to raise enough money to pay them their salaries. Hmm. So your priorities start to shift a bit. Secondly, Greenpeace decided to describe humans as the enemies of the earth, whereas we had started off with a strong humanitarian vision as well as environmental. The peace in Greenpeace is to stop humans from destroying themselves with nuclear war. So you had to care about people. But in the end, the environmental movement decided to characterize humans as the enemies of nature. In other words, we're the only evil species. All the other ones are good. And that's way too much like original sin for me. I'm not a fire and brimstone kind of guy. I believe that humans are part of nature. Well, because they are. That's why I believe they're part of nature. And there's way more good people than there are bad people. I suppose there's bad animals too, like rogue elephants. And I know for like a fact there's bad animals. I mean, that's just, I've, I've had experience with some of them. But going back to so uh, Greenpeace and, and as a kid, were you the kid that was about saving the planet and hugging? Were you a tree hugger? Were you the guy that would walk up and see a tree and you'd hug a tree and you're like, I can't believe they're doing this to the planet, these rich people. They're doing such bad things that made you want to go join Greenpeace. Like, was that kind of, if I was to, you know, follow you back and we had content on you at 14, 15, 16 years old, was that you? No. My father was a logger. And so was I. So were all the people around me and fisher people too. So we knew that you had to take from nature in order to survive. And there's simply no question of that. And that's why these campaigns today to stop using energy are so stupid because there's 8 billion people. And so I have a balance about this. It's not a one-sided situation. Of course we have to protect the planet. That's what feeds us but we also have to keep ourselves alive. And people don't understand how, how short a time it takes for you not to have any food before you disappear from this life, because nobody's experienced it much in recent years. But we're now facing a situation where a huge number of very powerful organizations and elites at an international and at national levels are calling for policies that are basically a suicide pact basically a, a death wish of some sort. And it's true, they might not want to say it out loud, but there's a lot of people who think there's too many people. And I, I, I think that's ridiculous myself. We're, we're quite well off now than we were before. Mm -hmm. Just 20 years ago, we're better off now with the technology and, and the uh, knowledge of the science we have. Dr. Moore, you're saying these organizations or these corporations, are, who are you referring to? You're talking about the World Economic Forum. Uh, who are you referring to? Well, let's start there, yes. Okay. Uh, most so you probably have some choice words for Klaus Schwab, I assume? Yeah, the guy who said we'll own nothing and be happy. It's a sad situation that we have come to. I didn't realize it could possibly ever get this serious as mm -hmm. I've gone through like 45, 50 years of evolution with this train of thought. And when climate change first came up as an issue, I realized that we were being duped, and it was all about money. 80% of all the science research in the United States is in universities. They have basically become money-milling machines getting government grants to tell the politicians what they want. Mm -hmm. What the politicians want is stories that make people afraid. So you're, you're driving down the freeway in your SUV, you're afraid you're killing your grandchildren. That makes you feel guilty. That makes you open your wallet and send a big check to Greenpeace. Mm -hmm. that, the politician then exaggerates that in the, in the public. The media exaggerates it. The activists exaggerate it. And the scientists are the, are the silent part of it in a way because nobody sees the money going from the politicians to the scientists. It goes through bureaucrats at state, city, national, international levels. And that money is meant to create narratives that will scare people and that make mm -hmm. them easier to control. 